to the SU Soccer Stadium where Syracuse is hosting an ACC tournament semifinal game for the first time in program history. And like their opponents from Virginia, Syracuse will be coming out in the 3-5-2, Michael. And keep an eye on the battle between the two goalkeepers for Syracuse, Russell Sheely. He's an experienced player, one of the leaders of the back line. His decision-making of when to stay on his line and when to come out could be the difference defensively. And on the other side, the Virginia Cavaliers, their goalkeeper, Holden Brown, ACC selection. He was a big factor defensively for the Cavaliers. Talented goalkeeper, good size. His shot-stopping instincts is something George Galnavach will rely on. George Gelnovich is the longtime head coach at Virginia, now in his 27th year, a two-time ACC Coach of the Year, all-time leader in victories as the head coach of this program, and also a first-team All-American while playing at Virginia back in the day, and opposed tonight by Ian McIntyre, who just today was named ACC Coach of the Year for the second time in his career. Now in his 13th year here at Syracuse, the native of England, he was also a first team All-American at nearby Hartwick College back in his playing days. Well, this time of year in upstate New York, it could be blowing snow and 30 degrees, but they caught a break tonight. Quintessential postseason soccer weather, clear skies and the temperature in the low 50s as this one gets set to commence. And they will take the kneel, the unity kneel as they have before every game this season. Syracuse in the orange and blue, Virginia in the white. The two highest seeded teams left in the tournament set to determine the first spot in the championship match. And both teams coming off one nothing wins in the quarterfinal round. UVA beat Pitt at home while Syracuse defeated North Carolina here at the SU Soccer Stadium, and each club in great form right now. Virginia unbeaten in their last six games, while Syracuse has not lost in their last seven. And the architecture of these teams so similar. Their patterns of play, the types of talent that they have, the way they approach the game, and so many different facets. So when you have two teams, that mirror each other the way these two do. You get to the postseason. Where can the differences be made in a game like this, Michael? It's in two parts of the field. One is the midfield battle. Both teams boast dynamic midfield players. So whichever team can have whichever team can have their midfielders dictate the game will get the advantage. Second, it's the strikers. Both teams have dangerous striking combinations up top. Leo Alfonso for Virginia and Levante Johnson for Syracuse leading the way. Get the ball forward, maybe bypass midfield at times, and then your two strikers have to play off each other. This is the second meeting of the season between these teams. They also played here in Syracuse six and a half weeks ago. A one nothing win for Virginia in what was a very physical game. Nine yellow cards and even a red card for the Orange, who went down to 10 men just 22 minutes into the game when Giorgio Kopchewski picked up his second yellow. But even so, the winning goal from UVA didn't come until the 84th minute through Leo Alfonso. It turned out to be Syracuse's first loss of the season and also their only loss to an ACC opponent so far this season. Looking to make amends here, getting a shot blocked at the top of the 18. And now Virginia, a chance to counter. Using their speed with Afonso getting onto the end of this one, lays it off and makes a run towards the box. Now he's beaten to the ball at the end line for a Virginia throw. And that just typifies Virginia's counterattack through the movement, intelligent movement of Leo Afonso. One minute they're blocking shots, shows the commitment level. The other minute, two strikers up top, pinning the back three behind, making runs of the channel. Well done, 
going back to that first meeting at the end of September. How will what happened in that game inform what we might see here tonight, do you think? If you're a player on either team or between these two coaches, the only thing you take from it is that you're in for a tough battle. Remember, this was a statement win for the Virginia Cavaliers to come up to upstate New York and shock Syracuse and shock the conference. It really sent them on their way. Alfonso, a shot blocked, gets his own rebound. And Syracuse having to defend deep in their own end here and conceding the game's first quarter kick. Leo Alfonso has been active early on. That checked run is so hard to keep tabs on. As a defender in that back three, there has to be more communication. Alfonso just today named to the all ACC first team. Daniel Mangarov with the in-swinger on the corner. Good delivery here, headed towards the back post, headed down by Yulin. And once again, off a Syracuse player for a corner kick from the other side this time. And it's Syracuse who are doing just enough defensively. Block shots are going to be key in conference tournament play. Keep an eye on Philip Horton. He reacts fastest. Got good instincts from that striker position. And this time, it will be Jeremy Verley, the senior from Jamaica who will take this corner oh, kick from the opposite oh, side. Another in-swinger, this time headed out, but from the top of the box, the shot is blocked. That was Paul Visa on the volley. And Virginia has started well. It's been off set pieces. The Cavaliers so dangerous, and it's because they keep plays alive. Paul Visa, not the cleanest strike through traffic, but then again, credit to Syracuse. The commitment to have bodies behind the ball, players not ducking out of the way, taking it on the chin. Who is down and holding his right ankle here. Drawing a whistle from our referee, John McCloskey. And it's going to be a set piece from a dangerous spot. As we take a look back at what exactly happened. Oof. I'm surprised that's not a yellow card offense. Afonso wants to cut it back to that favored right foot. He already has a couple left-footed goals throughout this season, but a player who can use both feet. A good late, a 22 in orange and blue was the man whistled for that infraction. It was a very physical encounter the first time these teams played. Very physical here at the outset of this semifinal matchup, and now. The free kick from just outside the area, delivered at the top of the six and headed in for the game's first goal. And it looks like the flag may have been up, and indeed it was. Philip Horton offsides. Now let's see exactly Virginia, how close it was. Horton right in the middle. And Virginia knocking at the door. So many players on the other side of their defender. Syracuse has to be careful. You do not want to go down a goal against this stingy Virginia back line. And that was an issue for Virginia when these teams met here at the end of September. UVA whistled for offsides nine different times in that game. But they have been pressuring Syracuse here in the first seven minutes of this matchup. And Syracuse trying to get on the ball and get a foothold in this game. Both teams like to be on the ball, have possession. But so far, it's been largely controlled by the Cavaliers in the early going. Overlapping run, but Andreas Euland is there to shepherd it out. UVA, this is part of their DNA. They pin you in your own end. They get the ball out of their back line, get the ball forward, and it's their midfield, the second line. When that ball gets kicked out, you have to be more solid in your decision-making, your execution of clearing your lines. If you don't do that, they do have enough intelligent players who will punish you off second phase opportunities. Not a huge surprise, though, the way this game has started, because sometimes you get to this point in the postseason, you have nerves, you have adrenaline, and it takes a while for everything to sort of work its way through your system and settle into your rhythm and your patterns of play in a game. So Syracuse hoping they can get to that point without conceding a goal here, the way things have unfolded. Now driving forward, 
across a little too ambitious, and it's Holden Brown once again scooping up in goal for UVA, the junior from Zionsville, Indiana. National Player of the Week this past week after he made a season-high nine saves in their quarterfinal win over Pitt. This is good goalkeeping from Holden Brown. You judge the trajectory of the ball, you judge the angle of the ball well, but you have to come out aggressively, and he executes. Booster Schobert heading it up into the air. Here's Horton, now Afonso on the turn. Now Eulett makes the pass, but the whistle had blown the foul against UVA here. As Lorenzo Baselli was taken down, the junior from Italy. Baselli boasts quick feet in the middle of the park. That rotation between the midfield three, which one of them is going to get out and be that late runner from midfield? You put your money on Baselli because he's been doing that throughout the season. And Syracuse gets the throw. Deep in the Virginia end. Low line drive comes in. Just shy of 10 minutes gone by. Syracuse starting to look a little better. More adventurous going forward. Forcing Virginia to defend for the first time. As the Cavaliers now break out. And Axel Allender is taken down here. The junior from Norway and a transfer from James Madison was the CAA Rookie of the Year while playing for JMU. And last year was that conference's tournament's most outstanding player. Hoping to have a similar run through the rest of this ACC tournament one year later. Between Allender and Mangaroff, those two interchange who gets forward and who sits back. Afonso on the cross, but once again, the flag is up for offsides. Already the third here in the first 10 minutes for the Cavaliers. George Gelnavach will be happy to see that whenever Leo Fonzo has made a run into the channel or dragged the center back out to follow him, Philip Horton has stayed centrally. If you're going to have a front two, one's going to have the freedom to move freely, find space, find the game. The other one has to be that target forward and goal poacher in the box. Eulen goes backwards with it. Andreas Eulen, the senior from Norway, who was just today named the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. All ACC first team selection as well. A guy who's played with the Norwegian youth national teams. And so steady on the back line. He's a minutes eater. He's tall. He's physical. And is so much a part of this UVA defense that's become even more robust at the end of the regular season and now here into this tournament. And a slip by Reese Miller, the freshman for Virginia as he tried to cut it back. Reese Miller, also a decorated player here. Even in his first year on campus in Charlottesville, the freshman from Houston making the all ACC freshman team here this year. If you're Reese Miller, and he'll grow into this with more experience. When you get the ball in wide areas and you're playing against a matching 3-5-2 system, don't overcomplicate it. Don't try and over dribble. Just get the touch out of your feet and whip that ball in the box. You have runners waiting for service. This is good footwork from Nathan Apoku. Plays the entry pass in earlier. Kapoku wriggled Baselli. by three or four defenders. Baselli getting fouled, and the referee John McCluskey calling a few players over for a conversation. Short free kick taken. Doesn't work out for the Orange, though. Now Alfonso tries to play it ahead to Horton, but a bit too far for his intended man. 
Well, Virginia, such a good road team this season, unbeaten away from Charlottesville. They play so fearless on the road. Unbeaten in the last six overall. And also very good in tight games. Seven consecutive one-goal games here leading into this game. And very comfortable with fine margins as Visa serves it in, headed out. And Kappelsberger volleys over the top of his head. And the fact that Virginia has such a good road record, they haven't really played on the road much of the season, predominantly playing games in Charlottesville. For the Cavaliers, that experience it's going to be tested at some point during this game. Everything changes when you're playing at home and then shift to road form in conference play. This is just the ninth all-time meeting between these two schools. Virginia leads the series with five wins, two losses, and one draw. And just the second time they've ever met in the ACC tournament. The other time was in 2019, UVA won in the quarterfinal round, as this one is played long off the free kick, but easily handled by Holden Brown in goal. Now, coming up next, our second semifinal game, again featuring a seeded Clemson taking on number four seeded Wake Forest down in Winston Salem. Setting things up for the championship match on Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPNU. Winner here gets the winner of that one for the ACC tournament crown. Number two versus number three here. Physical play from the Cavaliers. Verley coming in with a crunching tackle on Baselli, who's already taken a couple licks. That midfield matchup will be a telling point. Whichever team can exert their physical dominance, but also find time to play, will get the edge. So another opportunity for a long free kick here, like they had a moment ago. And clip it into the box from here, hope to get a header on it. That's exactly what they do. Trying to get the runner, but Holden Brown once again reads it well and comes out of his goal to make the grab. Holden Brown named All-ACC third team today as a keeper for UVA. Second in the ACC this season with eight shutouts. And so reliable, so durable. He has played every minute of each of the last two seasons in goal for the Cavaliers. It's his big game presence that I've been impressed with throughout this season. He's gotten better and better as the season's gone on. Good throw here, setting things up for UVA, and the shot just misses far post by Afonso. Syracuse caught off guard there, and a defensive lapse almost contributing to the game's first goal. This is intelligent play from Afonso. You cannot be offside on a throw-in. He gets that five-yard cushion, takes a good first touch, but doesn't get his angles right in the end. Russell Sheely doing well to come across to cut off the angle and see that shot go wide. He has been dangerous here in the early going. He had the goal here at Syracuse back in late September in the 84th minute, the only goal of the game. Got it on a long ball from his keeper, Holden Brown. And one of six goals on the season for Afonso so far. He's tied for the team lead in that category. And leads the club in points overall with 16 as we get our first yellow of the game. And I alluded to it earlier, and this was a caution-filled meeting between these teams six and a half weeks ago with nine yellows and one red. And the first booking here comes at the quarter hour mark. I think it's a bit harsh from the referee. Philip Horton was losing his footing. There's a correct foul call, but I don't think that's a yellow card. And now Anthony Sinclair, who's a physical player, one of the hard men of this Syracuse midfield and backline connection. He has to tread carefully. Hey, he's a senior from Costa Rica. But that is his game, being physical. As Eulen can't quite control that one off the long free kick. But Anthony Sinclair is the type of player that head coach Ian McIntyre says has a tremendous edge in. He covers so much of the pitch. He puts out fires all over the field, but 
When he sits on a yellow, that takes something away from his ability to be physical and do the job the way that the team hopes he can. If you're Coach McIntyre, he has the armband for a reason. Responsibility, you place the responsibility into one of your leader's arms. When I was at Wake Forest, that was something that head coach Jay Vidovich talked to us about all the time. He told us to go out there and play fiercely, but also play smart. And now Sinclair will have to be very smart the rest of the way. Apoku with a shot well off the mark here. So just south of half an hour left to go here in a scoreless first half in the first of two semifinal games on the day in the ACC men's soccer tournament. Number two Syracuse hosting number three Virginia. What have you noticed in the first portion of this first frame as Holden Brown slips on the goal kick here, allowing Syracuse a potential opportunity as they intercept but then are dispossessed right away. But what has stuck out so far in the early going to you, Michael, that might require a few tweaks from either side? I think Syracuse have been surprised with the fact that Virginia has bypassed their midfield a lot of the way. Leo Fonzo has been the spark plug we thought he would be. And on the opposite side, it's been a relatively quiet start to the game for Levante Johnson. The big three of Virginia's back line, they're very physical. They're not really giving him any space to run in behind. Johnson's a player who wants to use his speed to make runs. I think runs from midfield from either team. That midfield battle, as I said earlier in the year, whichever team wins that will start winning this game or creating more chances. But so far, advantage Virginia. There's Russell Sheely, confident with his feet, playing it long. The Richard senior from Georgia, but it comes right back to Afonso. And his left-footed shot partially blocked by Christian Curdy. So Afonso continue to pose a danger to the Syracuse back line. And that's just too much space between defenders. When you're playing a back three, you have to be compact in transition. Credit to Curdy for coming across, cutting off that angle, and getting a block on the shot. Syracuse in their first tournament semifinal in seven years. They got their first win in the ACC tournament since 2019 when they beat North Carolina a few days ago here at SU Soccer Stadium. Scored with their only shot on goal to win 1-0 in a very tight game. That goal didn't come until the 86th minute. You get to this point in the season, and there's not much between these teams. A lot of quality and a lot of nervy moments. There's Noah Singleman trying to work a combination ahead. Baselli a heavy touch. Now Sinclair taps it along for Kopchevsky. Makes the pass and then starts his run. Crafty footwork, but in the end, the Cavaliers are able to clear. And that's where if you're Kachevsky, you've already beaten your man. You don't need to cut back and try and beat him again. There are four or five players waiting for the service in the box. Do the simple things well. Don't overcomplicate it. Get it in the box. You have more of a chance for maybe a, a misclearance or an advantage. 1v1 in an aerial duel. Syracuse are good in the air. And again, finding Afonso in a 1v1 situation. Leo Afonso lays it off. Horton, a shot blocked. Comes down to Reese Miller. Now Afonso gets on it in the box. Miller again. Service is low and cleared out by the Orange. Some chaotic defending by Syracuse in their own end. And a constant threat being posed by Leo Alfonso inside the 18. Syracuse have to be careful in transition. They're committing a lot of numbers forward. They play an open, expansive style throughout this season. But Virginia counterattacking, leaving two strikers high. You have to have a 3v2 man advantage if you're going to quell that transition moment. A 
Alfonso has been on both sides of the pitch in the final third. And the junior from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and has played with the Philadelphia Union Academy as well as Inter Miami. And this season, offensively, he has been so dominant for this UVA side up top. He has almost three times as many shots as anybody else in their entire roster. That's how much of a focal point he is for their offense. A busy time up here in Syracuse, Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. The ACC Huddle Crew will be here in Syracuse to get you set for another full day of college football. They'll also have halftime shows as well as pre- and post-game shows throughout the day. At 6.30, you get a complete wrap-up of the afternoon games and then get set for the primetime matchup, which this week is Florida State taking on Syracuse at the Carrier Dome at 8 Eastern. It's all right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Syracuse soccer team hoping that they're not here for that football game that they are actually down in Cary, North Carolina. That will put them in the title match for this ACC tournament this Sunday afternoon. The physical play continues. Mapoku getting on the wrong side to make that tackle. In the college game you see it more and more. A lot of players defending with their hands, pushing with their hands. You have to be careful with that because you let the defender off the hook for all that good work you put towards pressing. Just be solid defensively and maybe but don't let the defender off the hook by pushing with your hands. Midway through this first half, no score, but an opportunity for the Orange. Now Poku run off the ball. There is a breeze blowing. It's in favor of UVA here in this first half, but other than that, perfect conditions here tonight. Clear skies, temperature now right around 50 degrees with 22 minutes left to go in a scoreless first half of play. Curled in, back post. Oh, and what a save. Holden Brown in the end, able to fall on it, but that turned out to be much dangerous than it initially looked. Kachevsky, what a ball here. And what a run, curled run from Levante Johnson. One of the first times we've called his name intelligent movement. Leo Fonzo has been doing a lot of the key movement in this half, but Johnson, if he could just round out his run a bit more, then you could get a cleaner shot, but much better from Syracuse. First time we've seen early service in the final third. If you're gonna break down a Virginia back line who sits in a low block. Early service is a great way. It doesn't allow them to get set. Levante Johnson did all he could just to, to get his foot on it, but couldn't get much on the shot. And on the one-timer, kind of a bouncing ball, and in the end, Holden Brown was able to cover it at the line. But Levante Johnson certainly a player to keep an eye on for the UVA back line. The senior from Ontario tied for the team lead in goals with eight this season. Had the goal in the 86th minute against North Carolina in the quarterfinal round, the only goal of that game. That sent Syracuse here to this semifinal matchup today. Second in the entire conference in points this season. He has really been tremendous. A transfer from Seattle where he led them in goals, assists, and points a year ago before making the cross-country move to upstate New York. And see, we see that more in the college game. You lose players through things like the draft or professional ranks, and now you're able to get experienced heads in the transfer portal. And players who can come in and make an immediate impact. I mean, this is a guy who, in his first season, is an ACC All-First Team player, as he was awarded with that recognition earlier today. Inside of 20 minutes left to go, first half. Sinclair on the pivot, but blindly passed it away. Much better from Syracuse. You hear the crowd getting into it. Defensive plays, Syracuse have forced errant plays from Virginia when they've stepped their high line up and pressed 
But if you're going to press, you have to have your midfield and front line connected and also your back line. You can't have this disconnect where your back line staying too high. I know Virginia, they've been playing dangerous passes on the counter through the movement of Afonso. But if you can stop those early passes from the Cavaliers, then you can win the ball higher up the field and then go in towards goal. Jonah Label trying to use his pace. He's been effective down the left for Syracuse so far. And here he is once again. Lost time on the right for Noah Singleman. Picks his head up. But his cross, a little too much juice on it. All the way across untouched. But Syracuse continues to threaten. And we'll get a free kick here. It's good work from Syracuse. Another early service. This time Singleman. Good things happening on this right side. On the left side, they've been going, trying to beat players 1v1 through Leopold. Now Singleman and Kajewski are figuring it out. Good flighted ball to the top. Avante Johnson, if things aren't working out for you on the offensive end, the work rate, that's how you can get yourself back in the game. It's good work by him to get his body in front and draw the foul. And the yellow card to Paul Visa, the sophomore from Rostock, Germany. Second yellow of this first half, now one for each team. Set piece for Syracuse. Looking to break this scoreless tie. Left footed free kick, headed clear. Abdi Salim has it blocked. And another whistle here, and another free kick for Syracuse. Can be an interesting decision from the referee. So close to being inside the box. And I think he's going to come over and take a look at it. He's going to look at the replay here and determine exactly how this should proceed. John McCluskey, our referee. George Gilnovich, not happy with that call. Now we'll get another look at it before McCluskey will. And exactly, where does it take place? Oh, I think this happens inside the box. Good work, that's a penalty kick. Good work from Opoku. When you're a defender, you do not let that ball bounce whatsoever. O'Connor just rests on his laurel, thinks he has more time than he does and panic. Defending in the end costs him, and I think this is going to be a penalty kick. And he has singled for a penalty. So it is a penalty kick for Syracuse. After the review, John McCluskey has awarded the home side the best opportunity so far to get on the board. For all the work Virginia had been putting into this game, into this half, it was being solid defensively, getting that ball out, clearing your lines early. The one time they fall asleep, thinking they have more time than they do, it sets up a dangerous opportunity and a penalty kick chance for Kocheski. So Giorgio Kocheski, who got two yellow cards and a red, 22 minutes into the first meeting with Virginia earlier this season. Now looking for his fifth goal of the season that would give them the lead here in the semifinal round of the ACC tournament. Well taken by Kopchevsky and Syracuse leads here at home. And it just had to be Kopchevsky, the player who was expelled the last time these two teams met. A bit of redemption song from him to have the nerve, to have the mental fortitude to step up in a conference tournaments game is massive. He steps up, gets whip on that, the accuracy, but he hits it low. So difficult for any goalkeeper to save. When you hit a ball with power, with pace, and to the corner, not many goalkeepers around the conference or around the nation are going to get a hand on that. 
even when a keeper guesses right, when you strike it with that kind of authority, typically you're going to score. So Kokchevsky has given the orange the one nothing lead here with just north of 18 minutes left to go in the first half. And Syracuse, a very good front-running team, unbeaten this season when getting the first goal. But certainly, hope is not lost for UVA. They've been very active and dynamic going forward in the final third. They've had several good scoring opportunities. So this is a team that will not be phased by going down a goal here in this first half. And set pieces are a great way to be the great equalizer. Just when you score a goal, you are most vulnerable five minutes after you're ahead. Jeremy Verily. We'll take this free kick, and Russell Sheely coming out, but it goes over the top of him and out for a goal kick. And Verily overcooks this one. Got to do a bit better job. Credit to Sheely. That's the experience paying off there, recognizing that that ball was going to go out of bounds. No need to overcommit to it. See it out. It allows your team to reset and regroup. Seventeen minutes left to go in the first frame. Afonso dropping deep to get on the ball here. That's a good find on the far side for Paul Visa. Cuts it back for Afonso from the top of the 18. His shot takes a deflection. And then the header is out for a goal kick. For Virginia, anything good that's happened has happened through the play of Leo Alfonso. Everyone looking for him. He checks his run at the top of the box. But because that ball bounces up, bobbles up, not the best first touch, it allows Syracuse to recover. And block shots have been the theme of this first half. The Orange getting out of dodge. Leo Alfonso has scored in each of the last two games against Syracuse for the Cavaliers. And he has looked like the most likely to score here tonight for the Hoos as well. Label wins the throw. Sinclair spinning and has it deflected out for another Syracuse throw in. And after that goal, Syracuse really starting to settle down, getting more touches on the ball and doing a good job of compressing space in the midfield, winning second balls and pinning Virginia back in their own end. Noah Singleman tries to get a cross in. Virginia has looked good going forward, but this is going to be a tough Syracuse team to break down defensively. The Orange conceding the fewest goals among all ACC teams in conference play this season. They've had nine shutouts this year, their most since 2014. That's credit to the senior leadership and the experienced leadership in the back, starting with your goalkeeper and going to that mid, that back three of your center backs. For Virginia, to change how you attack, they've gone long trying to find the angled runs of Afonso. Look to Mangroff to step up in the more attacking midfield position. Allender was looking for Afonso. Cut out nicely. And Syracuse looks to counter. Now Levante Johnson against two defenders. And finally slips over the top of the ball. Seen that a few times in this first half. Players trying to do too much. I know the crowd is behind you. A couple low lays. As I said before, do the simple things well. When you beat your man, get the ball in the box. Give your teammates a chance. That's Michael Sekulius, number 22, first substitution of the game. And also Nils Orwall, also coming in, number 21 for Virginia. And Philip Horton gets a break for the first time tonight. The junior from Ohio. Oh, 
And here's Orwell on the run uh, against Singleman, but can't get there for UVA. I thought Philip Horton started the game well. Thought he had a set piece goal, but was undone by half an inch of being offside alongside. But then got quiet. The physical play of Syracuse's back line really got to him. It's interesting, Michael. Sometimes a team gets some opportunities early in a game before the game itself has settled into a groove. And if you take those opportunities and you convert, it can really change the complexion of the entire game. But if you miss those opportunities, you may not get another one. You just never know. And right now, they find themselves trailing here as we come up on the final 12 minutes of the first half. And given Syracuse's track record of being one of the best defensive team in the ACC and around the country, <laughs> you'll be kicking yourself if you're Virginia going in at halftime. And there's still 13 minutes left in this half. But if you don't take your opportunities at this point in the season, every team is good enough to punish you. All it takes is one chance and one, one opportunity to decide the game. And it's always those first few minutes at the beginning of the game or the second half before teams have settled in. Those are the times where you can convert and create some opportunities where you might not otherwise. If you're the and road even though team. It was early, even though it was early in the first half, Virginia, you never know, might be kicking themselves for not being more clinical and ruthless with those chances that they had. If you're the road team, we've seen that throughout this tournament. Road teams have started well. The road teams that have gotten the early goal or capitalized on their early momentum have gone on to be effective. You don't want to leave things to chance in the second half to try and claw your way because you will be equally vulnerable on the counter for a second goal. Michael Sekulius coming in off the bench, the sophomore from Boston. And now Syracuse making their first substitutions of this first half. Levante Johnson coming out. Kurt Kellogg checks in, the sophomore from New Jersey, a high school All-American. Colin Byros also replacing the goal scorer. Kochevsky, who converted with the penalty kick. Byros, the grad student from Jackson, Ohio. A transfer from the University of Akron, where he played for three years with the Zips and help lead them to the College Cup back in 2018. So he has some significant postseason experience. Remember last season, Coach McIntyre talked to us about the high hopes he had from the likes of Byros. He was a spark plug for them coming off the bench, impact player to sub in and really see this half out. In tournament play, and conference tournament play, you have to give your star players rest because they're logging a lot of minutes coming up to a game like this. And that type of experience from a guy like Byros is so valuable because Ian McIntyre was telling us earlier this week that a lot of his players have never even played in the postseason to this year. And there's an appeal for a penalty, none given there as Oigunlu Played it well defensively for Syracuse. Well, Steve, he's had a couple timely interventions. I think because of his physical play and him stepping up defensively, it's quieted Virginia's attack a bit more. He did get caught out of position on that golden opportunity from Leo Fonzo on the throw-in, though. That ball is going to stay in. Virginia not getting in behind the Syracuse defenders as much here late in the first half as they did earlier. Nine minutes left to go. Only Syracuse goal coming on the Giorgio Kopchevsky penalty kick. Here's Axel Allender. Now fairly. Allender again. Good combination work. And that is going to go out for a corner. Third quarter now of the first half for the visitors. That was a tackle that had to be made from Kachevsky. 
He blocked one earlier with a cross coming in. And when you're a midfielder, you have to be good on both sides of the ball in this 3-5-2 formation. And executes Daniel Mangarov, the junior from Duluth, Georgia. And the low line drive is headed out. Right to Paul Visa. Visa with the service, and Virginia ties the game! Andreas Eulen, the senior from Norway, the big boy, gets the head on it in the box, and we're level at one in upstate New York. Keep an eye on Orvo when he comes up. This flick, I think it was Allender actually, who gets the dangerous flick. Syracuse caught flat-footed in the box. Not, not enough players reacting. Andreas Eulen, he's a defender by nature, but he will not miss that one. You need your big-name players to step up when your team needs them most. And he does a good job of heading that ball into the ground and past the outstretched arms of Sheely. Eulen, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, getting that award earlier today, but it's his offense that has tied this game here at Syracuse with seven and a half to go in the first half of play. But now here comes the Q's right back, and a point blank save, the best of the game made by Holden Brown as the Orange had the opportunity to snag the lead right back. This is just class goalkeeping from Holden Brown. Again, Virginia getting caught with sloppy touches in the back line. Brown so quick off his line. He makes himself big. Makes the difference in that. If he stays on his line or makes himself small, then that's Syracuse coming back with a goal, making it 2-1. to one. Holden Brown, just tremendous. A guy who led the ACC in saves last year, was top five in the NCAA, has been at the top of the ACC charts for goalkeeping all season long this year as well. And a, another substitution for the Orange, Francesco Pagano, the sophomore from a town just southeast of here in Syracuse, checking in for the first time tonight. And it will be Nathan Apoku who takes a seat, a sophomore from Ghana. And we'll restart once again. If you're Syracuse, now you have your two leading goal scorers on the bench, getting rest, waiting for the second half. But you still keep the same elements. You have one runner in Kalov, and then your holdup guy in Pagano. again as Noah Singleman tried to get the quick restart after the foul for Syracuse but it'll now be Abdi Salim who will put it in play for the Orange. Look at how high so up Andreas Andreas Ewan. Ewan. Yeah I was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's on, exactly see. right. Yeah. <laughs> But it, shows, it just shows the confidence at which he's playing. One of the experienced heads of this Virginia team and the true leader of Virginia, so fearless to step out and leave that back three. If you're going to do that as this, one of the three central defenders, you have to win the ball, and he does so. And there's a long shot from distance, and Brown equal to the challenge in goal. Ripped by Kalov, the sophomore. Kellov coming off the bench. Good first touch. Sees Brown off his line, and that ball dips. Brown's made a couple big saves throughout this tournament and won a few minutes before. Corner kick for Syracuse. Four and a half left to go. First half tied at one. Kellov after the shot, takes the corner, chips it in. Good delivery, and it's Eulen who heads it out. However, Sekulius didn't get a lot on that clearance, so the Orange can reset. Disappointing from Syracuse not to get more out of that play. I think miscommunication and misreading the angle of the run. It was a good run, 
but you have to reward your teammate for making a smart run in the box. Errant pass intercepted by Sekulius. But that ball will be too far for him to run on to. And it's Russell Sheely back in his own area. Russell Sheely got the assist on the Levante Johnson goal on Wednesday in the quarterfinal round. And that's going to be a foul against Syracuse. Mm, Amperty Sinclair not happy with that call. I didn't see much in this initially. Sinclair, defensive midfielder, and that's not a foul. It's, if anything, it's a foul in Orville. Sinclair out muscling the Virginia defender. And he'll be frustrated. He's right to be frustrated. Just stronger on that play, wanted more on that play, and it sets up a set piece opportunity for Virginia with minutes left in the half. Dropping inside of three minutes left to go. Inviting area for this free kick for UVA. Paul Visa standing over it. Head coach Ian McIntyre telling his team to stay high at the top of the 18. And the header sent back to the top of the box, and then the shot well over everything and out of play. And Syracuse will be relieved to see the miscue at the back post. Syracuse already caught off guard. Too many players not following their markers. Andreas Euland was wide open, and one of his teammates got in his way. Euland could have either put that header on target or redirected it for an open chance for the Cavaliers. Not good enough from Syracuse on set pieces. Two minutes left to go here in this first half. Afonso has to cut it back. No white shirts in the area. Now it's crossed in and easily handled by Sheely. The transfer from Maryland. And I mentioned how he got the assist on the game-winning goal in the quarterfinal victory for Syracuse over North Carolina. And a funny story about that. He played it long late in the game. His head coach, Ian McIntyre, was saying, don't play it long. He was telling him to, to keep it short. And he was imploring him not to boot it down the field. But the crowd was so loud here at the SU Soccer Stadium that Sheely couldn't hear him. He went on instinct, played the long ball, and they got the goal in the end that made the difference and got them here to the semifinal tonight. And those are the stories you just love hearing at this point in the season. A goalkeeper trusting his instincts. And I'm not saying if you're a player on the field or young players watching at home to go against what your coach says. Do not usually do that. But as a player on the field, <laughs> trust your instincts because that can make the difference in the end. Players win and lose games. And on that play, that was the winning formula. At least he told his coach that he couldn't hear him. <laughs> That's a smart Either move. That's a smart move. <laughs> It's also heads up by the keeper. <laughs> Alfonso here. First half as we dip inside of the final minutes. Alfonso trying to unlock this back line of Syracuse. The majority of his opportunities came early in the first half. And just has not found the same type of service or opportunities here late. But we're tied at one. Giorgio Kocheski scoring first for Syracuse on a penalty. And then Andreas Eulen answering on a header in the closing minutes of this first half. And an entertaining first 45 here at the SU Soccer Stadium as well. And that is going to take us to the break. Number two versus number three for one spot in the championship match on Sunday and tied at one. But he's been in the United States for a long time, played at Hartwick College, which is just down the road from Syracuse and also coached in Oneonta, which is about 90 miles southeast of here as well. So he spent a lot of time in upstate New York and now coach of the year in the ACC for the second time as we get this second half underway. Steve Schlanger, Michael LaHood, 
if you were the two coaches, including McIntyre, Michael, what would have been the message to the teams in the locker room at the break? For Syracuse, it was about finishing out the half and finishing out plays on set pieces. They got caught sleeping. I thought they did a good job of finding their way back in and working their way back in to a half that they didn't start the game very well. And for Virginia, you say job done. There's more pressure on Syracuse because of the quality season they've had. Virginia is a very good row team. I think George Gelovac would be the happier of the two coaches. The Cavaliers had that quick start in the first half, failed to score before Syracuse grew into the game. We'll see if they can get off to another sprightly start here in the second half. Afonso has it taken away here. And Kopchewski hits it off of Afonso and out. Better work from Syracuse. Leo Afonso was a thorn in their side early on in the first half. Not enough players getting around him. But the midfield reacting well. Crowding him out. Plenty of space for Syracuse. Now on the opposite side. Singleman, though, has a pass intercepted in the middle of the pitch. Now Paul Visa trying to play the give and go. Gets it back from Philip Horton. His pass comes up a little shy of its intended target, however. Michael Sekulius. Now for Virginia, heading into the second half here. It's a Good news, bad news scenario. Good news is the fact that over twice as many of their goals this season have come in the second halves of games, but they've also conceded over twice as many in the second half, too. For the Cavaliers, I think that's the biggest improvement I've seen from them is playing complete games. They want this game to be close. They have a very good record in close games in ACC conference play. As I said before, the longer this game goes 0-0, go back to earlier in the season when Virginia, they were up a man, but they scored late through the brilliant play and footwork and finishing from Leo Afonso. That will start playing in the back of Syracuse players' minds at a given point. Yeah, both teams, though, will be comfortable in a close game. As Virginia has played 10 one-goal games this season, Syracuse 12. And both so good defensively, may not be a, a lot of opportunities. As Labeled crosses in here. And that's going to be kept in. Nathan Apoku will be kicking himself on that play, doing well to get between center backs. Andreas Eulin doesn't jump for it. Good positioning from Apoku, but takes one too many touches. Get it out of your feet and shoot. Oh, a spin move here. That was some crafty footwork, winning a corner. The strike partnership of Syracuse. Apoku had the earlier chance. Levante Johnson pirouettes through defenders. Good center, low center of gravity. But can't get the shot off. Jonah Label, the sophomore from Germany. With the in-swinger. Headed away by Aiden O'Connor. And he'll do it again. Another low line drive. Singleman, quick throw. That's a frustrating decision from Leibold. Virginia has a lot of big bodies in the box. Three big defenders. Typically you'll see a vulnerability when you see big defenders at the near post or in the middle of the goal, the far post is wide open. Have to do better, have to execute a bit better from set piece opportunities. Five minutes going by, second half. Now Syracuse has only allowed more than one goal once this season. That was a loss 
to number 22, Cornell. Virginia, meantime, also very good defensively. They've only allowed two goals to ACC teams in the top 25 this season. And they played the top four scoring offenses in the conference, but again, just allowing a pair of goals. So that's how good, crisp, and clean the defense has been for both teams. But still an offensive opportunity here, and oh, just missed to the far post. Kuchewski had the brace on his foot to give Syracuse the lead. Flared it out wide. These are the opportunities you have to put away. That ball caught under Kachevsky's foot. He opts to take it across his body with his left foot. He should have taken it in stride with his right foot. If he does that, have a better good first touch. You have the goalkeeper stranded. Brown not coming off his line. And Virginia let off the hook. Should have been a goal. The best scoring opportunity of the game so far that did not result in a goal. Now Jonah labeled once again. And the foul against Andreas Eulen. Lorenzo Baselli taken down. Syracuse had thoughts about a, a quick restart here, but they're going to set things up here. And this is a very dangerous position for a set piece. Already in this second half, you've seen the difference from Syracuse. They're interchanging which midfielder makes the run in beyond through third man running beyond the front two. It unbalances Virginia's midfield so hard if you're a defensive midfielder to track runners from deep. Labeled and Baselli both standing here. And it's going to be Jonah Labeled. Corner kick for Syracuse. Operating a lot in the final third here in the first part of the second half. Lebo gets whip on this. Tries to go mid goal, and it's Leo Alfonso doing some defensive work. The glancing header from the attacker. Kopchevsky. All ACC third team player. And Virginia is finally going to get an opportunity to clear here. And we're going to get a substitution as Philip Horton is going to come back in. A little trickery from Syracuse. Two players getting in their way. If you're labeled, you call your teammate off of that. I think he had a cleaner look. Be a bit more selfish. But I like that from Syracuse, trying to give a different angled service. Oh, Paul Visa and Aaron Header. But can Syracuse do anything with the opportunity? Here's Singleman just going backwards with it. And offsides on the home side. So unfortunate for Nathan Apoku. Levante Johnson, this has been the one two punch that's come to good effect throughout the season. Johnson does well to hold his run, times it so well, and Apoku opts to go outside of the foot rather than the simple cushion inside the foot pass. I like the movement, both strikers looking for each other in the final third. Yeah, just about 10 minutes in the books here in this second half. 1-1 one, one game. First of two semifinals here tonight in this ACC tournament. If it stays this way, we will go to overtime. And it would be two 10-minute overtime periods, but we would play them in full. No golden goal. And if it's still tied, we would settle it in penalty kicks. 
so far in this ACC tournament. Only one game has gone into overtime. And that was back in the first round a week ago. Given both of these teams' second half pedigrees, we very well could see a late goal to be the decider. That's been a common theme for several teams throughout as Label punches this one across. Singleman beaten to it by Ollander. That last touch by Axel Ollander, and so it's a throw in for Syracuse. Jonah Label. Such good pace. And a foul this time on a Goodley. Olua Goodley, a sophomore from Ontario. One of six Canadians on the Syracuse roster. And if you've followed Syracuse in years past, they do a very good job of recruiting from Canada. Some of the notable alumni, Tejon Buchanan, Kamal Miller, to name a few. Here's Afonso running it down on the end line. Low cross. Probably could have done better. Might get another opportunity. And some miscommunication results in a Syracuse throw. So far in this game, I think Mangaroff has had one of his sloppier games this season, not looking as confident in the midfield. Sloppy touches, errant passes. For Virginia to be successful, for them to take the offensive weight off of Leo Fonzo's shoulders, he has to step up and be more of a factor. And an opportunity here for Syracuse, trying to get numbers forward. Apoku had a shot blocked, and now it's Mangaroff in transition for Virginia, for Afonso. Sliding as he hit it, and out for a goal kick. Kappelsberger will be breathing a sigh of relief. When you let that ball bounce, playing against speedy forwards, you will get caught. But credit to him, he takes the correct angle. And Dreyas Ulin back pressing, doing well to get a body on it and get a much needed block. Label with a shot or a cross, kind of in between here. He was aiming for Levante Johnson on that far post, but it winds up as a goal kick. Leopold has been the supply of services from wide areas. A bit of a mismatch in the end between Johnson and the closest defender. You're going to have to put more whip on it, maybe hit it on the ground for defenders trailing, facing their own goal. You might get a touch, an own goal, put him under much more pressure. Well, it's been a remarkable season for both of the squads that have traced similar arcs to the narrative as they both have in a lot of ways enjoyed a renaissance year. Last year, both had ACC records of just two wins, five losses and one draw. This year, they also have identical conference records of five wins, one loss, and two draws. Bouncing back after disappointing years a season ago, and even Virginia was picked to finish last in their division this year. But here they are, two quality teams, the second and third seed in the tournament, and battling for a spot in the championship match. Look at that turnaround from one year to the next, Michael. There's no better feeling than proving people wrong from predictions at the start of the year. That's something, remember my sophomore year, we prided ourselves to go into difficult places to play and get results, to turn losses from a year ago into wins or ties. I think those have been the two biggest differences I've seen between these two programs this year. The ability to manage games, too, has been so different. Both of these squads will be in the NCAA tournament. Virginia getting back there after a two-year absence, which snapped a 39-year consecutive appearance streak, which was the longest in the history of college soccer. Interesting decision here from the referee. Referee 
allows play on. I think Philip Horton had a half yard on a Goonley. And as a defender, you have to take a better starting position. Mangroff picks up his head and hits a first time cross into the box. Head coach George Gelnovac rightfully so angry at that play. Thought the referee may have gotten it wrong. He awarded the penalty to Syracuse in the first half. Converted by Kopchevsky. And the cue is coming again. Eulett heads it straight up. Now Poku turns and volleys. Nathan Apoku, third in the ACC in goals and points this season. And it's been because of plays like this. Doesn't cleanly connect with it, but instinctive shooting from outside the box. And George Gelnovac has just been issued a yellow card. He has been working the officials unhappy with that non-call back in the Syracuse penalty box a, a few moments ago. In games like this, you're going to see coaches sometimes let their emotions get the better of them. Now it just makes you wonder if another big play happens if the referee misses. One more yellow. Coach Gelnovac is off. It also makes you wonder, too, as part of the psychology of a coach getting upset, the fact that he did issue the penalty to Syracuse in the first half, does that enter into his mind and say, hey, it doesn't have to be a makeup call or anything like that, but still, we feel that we were warranted there. You gave it to them, but not us. Absolutely. There's a saying that a lot of coaches say in locker rooms, you hear it at halftime, you hear it at any stoppage of the play, do not let the referee make the final decision and have the final say on this game. On that play, I still believe it was a missed call from the referee. Would have been a good shout for a possible penalty kick. But the play moves on, and so now Coach Gelnovac has to move on. He has to keep himself as one of the most grounded figures on the field because your team looks to you when things get tightest on the road. Of course, George Gelnovac, one of the most experienced coaches in the game, 27 years now at Virginia. The only co head coaching job he's ever had as two players hit the deck here. But a chance for Syracuse. Left-footed shot comes in, and Holden Brown is right there. Syracuse have been so good at dragging Virginia out of their shell, moving them to one side. A lot coming down this left-hand side from the orange. A Poku unselfish play. And it's Kachevsky again. He's had some clean looks at goal. Remember the one he had at the start of the second half, should have put that one away. But good on him to start finding space around the box, at the top of the box even, to dispatch shots. And that was one of the things that Syracuse coach Ian McIntyre told us a few days ago. The team that has the most success pulling the other out of position, moving them away from their preferred shape. That's going to be the team that has the most success here tonight. In that category, you have to give Syracuse the edge. Virginia, it's been route one throughout this game, trying to hit on the counter through the pace of Philip Horton and Leo Fonzo. But Syracuse, they've read that movement well, and I think they've been the more dominant team so far in the second half. Syracuse out shooting Virginia 4-1 here in the second half after the Cavaliers outshot the Orange in the first 45 minutes. But both of the goals coming back in the first half of play. Kochevsky on a penalty for Syracuse. Eulen on a header for Virginia. Kochevsky stepping on the ball here. Apoku plays it back to him. He takes the hit, and Syracuse gets the free kick and a yellow card coming for the Hoos. And it's going to be Mangaroff who gets it. This is intricate play 
from Baselli. And I like the movement of a Poku. Poku constantly making himself available. And that is always going to be a yellow card from Mangroff. Arrives late. If you're going to arrive late, you have to set your feet. Bundles Baselli over. And fouls keep mounting up. These are two good set piece teams. If you keep giving up free kicks and corner kicks, they do have the quality to punish you. Virginia's already proven that. Lorenzo Baselli, the junior from Italy. Really the quarterback of the midfield for the Syracuse squad. Which is one goal on the season, but really the X factor for this team. That's what head coach Ian McIntyre calls him. Label tries to serve it in, and they're going to get a corner in the end. In this game, Baselli's had to grow and find space whenever he can. A player who, speaking of growing, he's grown a lot in this second half, Label. Reading the game and doing the simple things well. Early service can disrupt this Virginia team. Baselli off the corner with pace. And then cleared out by Asper Slavov. It's been rather quiet here since the early going. And a whistle against Syracuse. It's a good physical matchup to keep an eye on. Philip Horton very much the hold-up player and target forward between that front two of he and Alfonso. And he draws that foul by getting there first and dropping a shoulder and inviting contact. Here is Horton. Going 1v1, gets it on his left foot, line drive on the rebound, they take the lead against the run of play. Virginia in front for the first time tonight. Russell Sheely will be kicking himself for the decision to parry this shot. Virginia, something out of nothing, and credit to Philip Horton, a couple step overs. You have to get something on target and get your shot on target to be effective. So unfortunate for Sheely. Alfonso was the only player in the box that was of real danger. Leo Alfonso has been doing this throughout the season. Right play, right place at the right time. And he connects. He's not going to miss from there. Good first touch. And that ball is standing, waiting to be put in the back of the net. And this has been how Virginia has gotten results making plays when the game needs and executing in both boxes. Leading this team in scoring, the junior from Sao Paulo, Brazil. First team all ACC this season as well. And now Afonso has scored in his last three games against Syracuse. He had the goal earlier this season in the 84th minute, the only goal of the game here at SU Soccer Stadium six and a half weeks ago to help the Cavaliers get the victory. And now he has the go-ahead goal here tonight to make it two to one, just about midway through this second half of play. That's something I remember very well throughout my college career is certain players just rise up to the occasion against certain teams. For Virginia, last game against Pitt, it was Reese Miller, both his goals coming this season against the Pitt Panthers. And in this game, Leo Fonzo, the man for the big moment, scoring against Syracuse once more. And now Syracuse, which has largely controlled this second half, certainly had more genuine offensive opportunities, creating in the final third, unable to connect. And now Virginia, with a rare chance, they do execute. And as a result, they take the lead. And Steve, it goes back to that golden opportunity of what might have been had Kachevsky put that 1v1 chance away to start the second half. Now you're trailing and chasing the game. You now it's something we discussed earlier, Michael, the fine margins between teams like this. They're so similar in so many different ways. I mean, the formation they play, 
stylistic features. They're both good on the road. They've both played tough schedules this year, good against ranked opponents. You can go on and on. All the different metrics, they match up so well. So what is the difference? And it's a very fine line between these two teams. So it's a moment like we just saw that can make the difference if you don't execute and finish clinically when you have the opportunity. And right now, that's what hurts Syracuse. Jonah Label plays it ahead. Baselli into a poku. And oh, the best save of the night from Holden Brown. One hand outstretched to keep Virginia in front. This is excellent movement from Syracuse. And that extra touch there from Nathan Napoku. It gives Holden Brown that half a second of a chance. This is pure instinct from Brown. You can't teach that. He reacts. But that extra touch from Nathan Napoku, that ball would hit it first time. Those are the details you have to execute in, in the box against a good defensive team like Virginia. That shot was headed towards the bottom corner and Brown just got enough. Again, Holden Brown, the junior from Indiana, the current National Player of the Week after he had a season-high nine saves in their quarterfinal win. And making a huge one here tonight in the semifinals as well. And a free kick for Virginia here after the foul from Olu Ogunlu. ogunlu has been involved in some physical matchups. Oof, that's a clear yellow. It's a raking challenge down the leg of Leo Fonzo. Sometimes as a defender, you want to make an emphatic challenge to let the attacker know that you're there and he's not going to have the better of you. With 21 minutes left now, Agunli, who's a physical player, is on the yellow card. That could be a talking point to keep an eye on. Tempting spot for the Cavaliers. to extend this lead. Corner kick. Syracuse allowing more than one goal in a game now for just the second time this season. Daniel Mangaroff, the junior from Duluth, Georgia, set to take the free kick, the transfer from UNC Greensboro. Might be third time's a charm for a quality free kick. Not the best delivery for Mangaroff. Just north of 20 minutes left to go. Blocked off of Sinclair. If it stays this way, Virginia advances to the tournament championship game on Sunday. And will play either Wake Forest or Clemson. That game coming up next here on the ACC Network from Winston-Salem. The fourth seeded Demon Deacons hosting the eighth seeded Tigers from Clemson. Both those two teams have shown this season that there will be goals when they get together. And Clemson will have the memory of that 6-1 loss at Riggs Field. And they're going to stop the clock here. Conversation with the referee for a moment. Alfonso against the Gunlu. Horton trying to hold it up. Now Visa. And 
player down here, so they'll stop the clock and call the trainer out. Jeremy Verley, the player down here. Looks like he might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. Since the goal that Virginia scored, Virginia's had an uptick in aggressive play, winning that midfield battle. And that's been the dial that this game and the momentum that comes with it has really been set on. Is the team that's doing the dirty work. That battle between Verley and Sinclair, two of the hard men of that midfield. Now Syracuse got on the board first in that first half on the penalty. Converted by Giorgio Kopchevsky. Andreas Eulen answered with a header before the break. And in the second half, Leo Afonso was putting the Cavaliers ahead. It's been Holden Syracuse. Brown who has helped them on the back line defensively. And Syracuse will be kicking themselves because they've had clean looks. And this play comes to mind. Keep an eye on Opoku, that extra touch. Gives Holden Brown enough time to come across and make a world-class save. And you see the reaction on his face, breathing a sigh of relief. Six saves tonight after nine in the quarterfinal round. A guy who's played every minute in goal each of the last two seasons. All ACC third team this year. And that's Verily coming to the sideline now. With just inside of 19 minutes left to go. For Syracuse, they are in the semifinals here for the first time since 2015, which is also the only year they've ever won this ACC tournament. And if they're going to win it this year, they have to come from behind here on their home pitch. When you're Four down Virginia. in the semifinal. Go ahead, Michael. You're down in the semifinal matchup, and you have to come from behind. It builds character. In the championship, you're going to have to rely on some of that character to bail you out. And there's a giveaway. Here's Horton. But defensively, Salim back to recover. Now for Virginia, the only time they have played Syracuse in this tournament prior to tonight, it was the quarterfinal round three years ago. They beat the Orange and went on to win the ACC tournament in 29. Last time they have won this tournament, but no other school has won it more in history. Virginia is such a decorated program here in the ACC. Most tournament titles, most regular season championships, and looking to advance to the tournament title game once again this year. And now just 17, 21 away. For a long time, Virginia has been the standard bearers for this conference. And it's credit to George Galnovich the style of recruiting, but the mentality that he's instilled through his UVA teams. You go back to that 2019 teams, look at the amount of players that are playing the professional ranks that have made national team appearances. There is a winning culture that's been established through the decades. And when you consider all of the final four teams here in the semifinal round, Virginia is the only one that has beaten all of the other three so far this season. Syracuse, Wake Forest, and Clemson with Jeremy Verley, who was shaken up a little while ago, coming back in now, and Islander checking out for the Hoos. And of those three opponents, they've gone on the road to be two of them, doing it against Wake at Charlottesville. So really a well-rounded team, solid performers, home and away. Baselli for Syracuse. Playing the give and go, but Visa. Back to intervene. Oh. 
Syracuse looking to build. Kamchevsky gets with with label, runs at his defender. But in the end, a harmless cross for Holden Brown. The intention was there from Labeled, but that ball's just too close to Holden Brown. Brown coming off his line, something he's done well throughout this game. It's resulted in not just monster saves, but good, confident presence inside his six. Looks like Barely is down once again. Well, he was down injured a short time ago, came out, only stayed out for a little while, checked back in, but now it looks like he may have to come out for an extended period. This looks like non-contact. Like yeah, it's non-contact. He's still feeling it from before. Hobbling on that right foot. It was a crunching tackle. 50-50 play in the midfield, right at the midfield line. And that's going to be a massive miss for Virginia if Fairley has to go out, the enforcer, and brings balance to the two attackers alongside of him. Now, Fairley a big set-piece taker for this Virginia team, the senior from Jamaica. Has only made a handful of starts on the year, but he was a high school All-American and a member of the Jamaican youth national teams coming up. But now being helped off here with just over 15 minutes left to go. Albert Gashi will be his replacement. A freshman from Sweden. Kurt Caleb also coming in for the Levante Johnson. With Verley going out, that's going to change the look of Virginia's midfield three. Verley covers a lot of ground for the two attackers and even the likes of Horton and Alfonso allows them to stay high so he can break up plays in the midfield. Well, a quarter of an hour left to go. Syracuse needs at least one. If you're Ian McIntyre, what do you do here in these final 15 to try and find the equalizer, Michael? You get this man on the ball. Kaczewski, he's on the other side, but eventually you get Kaczewski as an attacking midfield. You've played two strikers with two box-to-box -box midfielders and a defensive midfielder going out and out, 3-5-2, get an attacking-minded midfielder underneath the front two to be that fulcrum and dictate play. Well, now things just got even more difficult for Syracuse as another yellow card has been issued, and this time it's on Jonah Labold, a sophomore from Germany. This game's getting chippy, clear yellow card. Late tackle from Label, more frustration than anything on that play. A guy who's been part of the German youth national teams, and now the bookings even at three apiece, and just three shy of what were assessed in their first meeting back in late September. Another physical battle here in the postseason. Here's Mangarov for the Hoos. And for Alfonso, who goes to ground, the immediate appeal for a penalty, and maybe he went down too easily. I think you're spot on. <laughs> Alfonso pleading his case. That's been a good matchup he between He to look he... at the review. Mm. Yeah, he does have a case after all. Curdy getting hands behind in the slight push on his back. I think Alfonso still tries to sell that a bit much. The referee is... Had some inconsistent calls in this half. And another call for Virginia going against them. Well, he wanted them to go and review it the way they did the Syracuse penalty in the first half. He made the TV monitor motion, which is so familiar now for VAR. But it was one of those plays where, yeah, it probably wasn't a hard push, not enough to send him to the turf, but hold it. There was contact, so it can kind of go either way in those situations. All right, Mangarov on the corner here, in-swinger coming. 13 and a half to go, Virginia by one. And that last bobble from Sheely makes you wonder if the errant play on the goal is playing on his mind, not looking as confident as he once was before the goal.
three Syracuse players industriously working for the ball. And the call goes against the Orange. One thing to keep in mind is the seconds tick off this clock. Syracuse, they want this game to be fluid, to be open, to get back in this game. You do not want the game to be disrupted and stop. That favors Virginia. It slows the game down, it allows them to manage the game a bit more. Syracuse trying to find a way through the middle. But it's the Cavaliers. Pressing them. Playing solid defense here and not giving the home side much time on the ball with a dozen minutes left to go. Virginia looking to stay unbeaten on the road this season and then advance to the ACC tournament title game for the first time in three years. Player down for the Cavaliers, clock is stopped. It's been physical play directed a lot at Leo Alfonso. It's been a target for a lot of tackles. You should get a look at this. It comes with the territory when you've been one of the best attackers in this conference and the team leader for the Cavaliers offensively. He'll be helped to his feet here. As it stands now, he has the game-winning goal. That would be two games in a row this season for Alfonso to get the game winner over the Orange here at Syracuse. Leading the ACC in shots this season. And another force offensively here tonight for the Cavaliers in the postseason. With the trainer coming off the field, it means that Alfonso has to go off before the referee lets him back on. So just south of 12 minutes remaining. Number three leading number two. The winner faces either Wake Forest or Clemson in the ACC tournament title game on Sunday in North Carolina. The Who's on the move. Reese Miller cutting it back. And whistled for the foul. Syracuse just can't get much sustained time in possession on the ball here. It's deja vu again. It's not the option they wanted there. <laughs> we just saw that moments ago where Sheely coming off his line, being aggressive. You have to keep that ball in bounds. You do your team no good by kicking it out of bounds. That favors Virginia. For Virginia, they're doing a good job of forcing entry passes in to the striker for Syracuse, but then collapsing around him. And once they win the ball, they connect the first pass, which is so important to keep possession and frustrate a desperate Syracuse team. The best spell of this second half for Syracuse was in the first 10 minutes of this second half. And now we're down to the final 10 minutes of regulation. Alfonso for Horton. Philip Horton. Splitting defenders with a pass from Mangarov, but couldn't find his feet. Quality individual effort from Philip Horton. Crafty in tight spaces. Baselli won it. 
gets help from Leibold. Again, Virginia covering everything right now. And Levante Johnson coming back in. Noah Singleman checking out. They need to get him in there with his offensive capabilities. Eight goals on the season, tied for the team lead. Leading the team in points. Had the late goal to produce the winner against North Carolina in the quarterfinal round as well. Chipped in. And it's going to be a corner. I like that angled pass from Sinclair. He lofts it, which makes, if you're a defender, it makes you guess. You have to time your jump well. And Kellogg does enough to force the corner. And Kellogg takes the corner. And that's a foul against Syracuse. The quality of the corner kicks here in the second half have not been all that great for Syracuse. A lot of low line drives, dipping balls, not even getting into. You gotta give your teammates to, a chance. I think it's down to the wind, the wind picking up at this stadium. And that's gonna affect how you serve a ball. That means you have to put more velocity on it, get more whip on your services. You hang it up in the air, the wind will take it in the wrong direction. Ball stays in. Virginia content here to chew on some clock with under eight to go. And a substitution coming up. Colin Byros coming on for the orange. The grad student from Jackson, Ohio, who came through the Columbus Crew Academy. Apoku after after the throw. And it's going to be a corner kick. Can they get better quality here from Kalov as they search for the equalizer? Seven minutes left to go. ACC semifinal game here in the tournament at SU Soccer Stadium. Good delivery, headed up by Eulen. Label gets there late. Sheely out at midfield to play it. And just past Kochevsky. How good has Philip Horton been defending in his own box, leading in counterattacks? When Virginia had their best spell of attacks and waves of attacks in the first half, it was through the physical play and the hold-up play and aggression of Philip Horton. Now he's back to some of his best in the second half. Good combination play. Chance for the Orange. And we're tied at two. Six minutes to go. Syracuse lives. And this goal comes out of absolutely nothing. It had been all Virginia before this. But credit to Apoku, his run and beyond sets up the combination play and the space. Baselli lets that ball run across his body. And this is just good awareness of where the goal is. Shooting across his body, keeping it low. Nearly impossible if you're a goalkeeper to get down low enough. And you see the frustration from Holden Brown. He had made a spectacular save early in the second half to deny Kachevsky. And it's the other attacking midfielder, Lorenzo Baselli, who comes up with the goods and a massive goal for Syracuse to tie them up. Just the second goal of the season for the junior from Italy who came here after playing at a Division III college. And so Syracuse the Orange getting a goal in the 86th minute of their quarterfinal game to beat UNC the other night here, and now also scoring late. This time to tie Virginia here in the semifinal round. The 
Vasselli, the goal scorer, now coming out. Jackson Glenn coming in. With just six minutes now left to go in regulation. What a gamble that was, Steve, by Coach McIntyre. He pulls off two center backs, goes with a back four, and gets more bodies and numbers in attack to support the front two. That's excellent management of the moment and what the game needed from a Syracuse standpoint. The Syracuse team that so often this season was playing with the lead, rarely falling behind, but tested in the most extreme circumstances here with so much at stake on their home pitch and responding to tie it late. That's one thing, Michael, when you are such a good team and you play with the lead so much during the regular season, you don't often face a level of adversity to test yourself. But you get into the postseason, you're going to be tested at some point, and you don't always know how you're going to respond. Well, Syracuse got a definitive answer right there. I think it's down to the character that's been instilled in this team. It's how they've gotten results, both teams getting results. Last season, it's games like this that either team would have lost. But the competitive nature and the resilience been, that's been built in the last 12 months is really on display here in this semifinal matchup. Coach Ian McIntyre said this is really the case of a team that is greater than the sum of the parts. Four and a half left to go. In the absence of another goal, we will go to overtime and we'll have a full 20 minutes. Two 10-minute sessions, no golden goal. We'll play it in full. And then if it's still tied, it'll be penalty kicks to decide it. Pass can't find a poku. So with overtime looming, and a berth in the championship game at stake. Under four minutes left to go. If you're both coaches, both squads, how do you play these four minutes here? You do the simple things well. And I think it's chasing down and gambling on certain plays. That midfield battle, winning second balls has been key for either team who's gained momentum. When Syracuse has done that, they've been more effective. When Virginia started doing that, it led up to the goal. Knocked down, rebound given up. Here's Leibold, saved off the line by Eulen two different times. But the flag is up for offsides. Holden Brown had come out of the goal. Andreas Eulen, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, saved it twice off the line, however. It's plays like this, that's why Andreas Eulen is the best defender in the ACC. Puts his body on the line, makes himself big. His defensive instincts and leadership, taking responsibility over a play that could have been absolute catastrophe and ended Virginia's ACC title hopes. He was offsides in the end, but a fine example as to why he won that award. It has been a second half where Syracuse has had the majority of the possession, the momentum. Virginia's goal came against the run of play. So that's something the Orange will have to guard against here. But both teams with opportunities. And you get to this point, it can be just a moment of magic. That's all it takes. If you're a head coach watching the final two minutes of this game, this is where all the rest that you've given your key players really start showing up. There's a lot of miles these two teams have covered to make it the competitive matchup that it's been. And now it's really who's going to step up, which one of your players is going to be the unsung hero of this game. Alfonso, who got the second goal earlier in the second half for Virginia. A minute and a half left. Virginia 
has not established much of an offensive presence in the second half, not much of a threat going forward. A few times, Afonso has gotten the ball in the final third, but outside of his goal, the Cavaliers have not done much. They spent a lot of time defending, and now we're down inside the final minute of regulation. I think that's what shot them in the foot leading up to the goal. They were dictating play, dictating possession, but they took their foot off the gas. You can do that in your opponent's end, but I thought they tried to slow the game down a bit, maybe grind out that 2-1 result. That third goal was there for the taking, and they didn't do it. Hence why Syracuse came back and executed. Reese Miller replacing Nils Orwall for the Hoos. Final 20 seconds of regulation. Played ahead for Afonso. And Sheely saving what would have been a corner kick with 10 seconds now left to go. Eulen back for this one. And we are headed to overtime for just the second time in the ACC tournament. Syracuse 2, Virginia 2 in the first of two semifinal games tonight in this conference tournament. What a game between the second seed and the third seed. We'll need at least overtime to decide it here at the SU Soccer Stadium in Syracuse, New York. And because they did not have overtime during the regular season, it has been a while since either of these teams have gone to the extra session. Just over a year ago, the last overtime game for Virginia was a 2-2 regular season tie against Pittsburgh for Syracuse. It was a 1-0 loss to North Carolina here in this ACC tournament. But both of those games just over a year ago, the last time they have played overtime this year, the overtime rules, different than what they've been in the past. No golden goal. We play two full 10-minute periods. No matter if a team scores early or not. And a chance for Syracuse to score early. Brown out to make the stop. Apoku on the rebound, and he shoots it high. Syracuse picking up where they left off just before the end of regulation. That's great goalkeeping from Holden Brown. So aggressive off his line. He's needed to be aggressive to put out some big fires for the Cavaliers. Napoku, rush of blood to the head. But Brown again coming out, cutting off that angle for Napoku's finish. Michael, without having played overtime during the regular season, first time this year for both of these teams going to overtime. Is it much of an adjustment? How much of an impact and a difference does it make for strategy and for the players themselves? It's a massive adjustment for both teams, not just because it's been a while since they've been to overtime, but these are brand new rules. The fact that it's no longer golden goal, number one, I love this because it gives more of a professional feel and closes the gap between the college soccer game and the professional ranks, but it gives the opposition a chance to rebuttal, and you're really going to have to earn it to get out of here with a victory in overtime. Levante Johnson held up, and that's going to be a card. A tactical or professional foul, however you want to call it, but it was almost a foul that had to be made. Moritz Kappelsberger, the fifth-year player from Germany, knew that Johnson was getting away from him in a dangerous area, so he grabbed him to slow him down. Kappelsberger looking like a boxer on this play, grappling with Levante Johnson. Johnson with the quick feet, wrong foots. Kappelsberger, if he doesn't make that foul, Johnson's off to the races. Smart foul from the German. So it'll be Lorenzo Baselli with the free kick. He scored the tying goal in the second half for Syracuse here. And a few different options. He could cross this. He may be able to go for goal. He's got a decision to make here how to play this. He goes out wide, and then the cross comes in. I think that was a wasted play from Baselli. You have everyone waiting in the box. Don't overcomplicate it. Said it time and time again. When either of these two teams have kept it sim simple and done what the game needs, a cross in the box to reward your big center backs. That was what the play needs. That's it right next time.
Alfonso down here, holding his face. Gets right back up. Somehow, he seems to be okay. <laughs> oh, man, a little holy water sprinkled from above. That's just, I don't like it when I see talented players looking for fouls like that. I think Afonso could do better on that, but the referee doing the right thing by letting that play go on. There's Ball Visa. Turning it quickly for Virginia. Now Afonso, his back is fully healed. Gets on to the end of this pass. <laughs> Miracle recovery. <laughs> Three minutes gone by here in the first of the two overtime sessions. Two 10 minute periods to be played in full. I think the other aspect of not having the golden goal is the fact that teams can be a little braver, bolder on the ball, not worry about making that critical mistake that could concede a goal and end their tournament hopes. I think this overtime set up favors the team that wants to play more if you know that you have 20 minutes across two 10 minutes halves the team that's willing to penetrate more in possession i think syracuse will be that team because syracuse that's in their dna that's how they've come out swinging in this first part of overtime virginia's got to do a bit more than just lump the ball forward they've had success doing that at times but over the course of this time period, the tired legs of Afonso and Philip Horton is going to start showing. This is Mangarov who is down for Virginia now. This is another aspect I would love to see added to the international game. When a player is down like this, stop the clock. Mm. Because in the international game, yes, you have the stoppage time that's added on at the end, but it never directly corresponds and is proportionate to the time that is lost to play. So why not just stop the clock? You know exactly where everything stands. The time seems fair and you're not relying on an arbitrary number that's been decided by the referee. I think the one argument against it is it kills momentum. If you're a team, say you're a team down a man, you're given a freebie because the clock is now stopped. In the world's game and everywhere else in the world, if you're down a man, that's a disadvantage that you're playing against, but it also becomes a disadvantage if the clock stops for a team that has a man advantage, that wants to keep momentum going, that wants to keep the flow of the game going. So I see both sides of what we're talking about and what's already been instilled in soccer. Yeah, I, I agree. Either way you slice it, it's going to be difficult because we see players go down, we see the phantom fouls and players rolling around to stall momentum anyway, even though the clock is still running. So. You can't find a, a perfect system, but we'll figure it out one day, Michael. You and I will get together. We'll write yeah. our manifesto for the game. <laughs> we'll fix it all. Half a dozen minutes left to go. Overtime number one. Levante Johnson tries to break the lines with the pass. Had a runner into the channel. Virginia just clearing down. Afonso racing towards it, but he'll be beaten to it by Christian Curdy. Very steady defensive player, senior from Ontario. All ACC third team performer this year. I like the play of Curdy throughout this game. It's been a good matchup between he and Afonso. I think because he's improved. Chance for Virginia here. They get to the end line, curl it back towards the top of the 18. That was a nice run by Reese Miller. Just couldn't find anybody on the other side. This is Alban Gashi. The freshman from Sweden goes backwards for Yulin. Sinclair that let's just say it's a smart play he sees Allender running through the gap and almost like setting a pick in basketball puts his body in front 
and gets the contact to go down. Disrupts that forward run from Allender. Leibold and Byros both coming on for Syracuse here. Meanwhile, in Winston-Salem, Clemson has scored first to take the lead over number four. So the Tigers on the road now leading the Demon Deacons in the first half. That game on Tigers. ACC Network Extra. That's good defensive work. A Gunley just tracked his man all the way. Levante Johnson overran that one, but Eulen was marking him. That was O'Connor who read that play well. That's why you play with the back three. Ooh, what a ball. Uh, it's all sides. Those diagonal balls from Virginia. They want to time just one. All it takes is one for there to be a bit of disjointed structure in your back line for Syracuse. And when they have space and speed, they're off to the races. There's a Poku. Four players surrounding him for Virginia. Now Label picks his head up. Apoku knocks it down. Tries to flip it into the middle. Taking a touch. The layoff to Leibold. But no shots on goal for Syracuse. And that, op that opportunity was begging for someone to shoot at the top of the box. Too intricate, the ball goes out wide. Opoku has a worse angle. And Visa with the block cuts out the angle for Opoku. This is Colin Byros on the corner for the orange. That's a good delivery. But it ends up in the side netting as we come up on two minutes left to go. It will be another 10 minute overtime period regardless of if anybody scores here in this first overtime session. Noah Singleman coming out. And so far, it's just been Syracuse rotating players. Kurt Kalov coming in to replace him. That's interesting in overtime. And Coach Ian McIntyre trying to find the right key to unlock this Virginia backline. Virginia very comfortable absorbing pressure. And they have a goalkeeper in Holden Brown who's been a standout in this game, really saving their blushes at times. These teams did just play a few days ago in the quarterfinal round, but there were times this season where they played two games a week, and you get the kind of adrenaline that you feel in postseason soccer. Two 10-minute overtime sessions shouldn't be too taxing in terms of what they can handle physically here. Under a minute to go in the first session. One thing I know to be true about both these coaches, both their teams are always fit. Keep an eye on that as we move towards this first intermission in overtime. Here's Visa. Trying to get a cross in, blocked out for a throw. And Syracuse is going to concede a quarter here late. 12 seconds to go. Virginia will have to hurry. They'll get it in. Loft it. Head it down. And Russell Sheely is there as time expires at the end of the first overtime. Ten minutes down and one more ten-minute period left to go before potential penalty kicks to decide who goes to the ACC title game. Syracuse and Virginia tied at two in overtime here in upstate New York. So far in this ACC tournament, this is just the second game to go to overtime. And now ten minutes left to go.
Virginia started very ambitiously in the first half. They had 10 shots in the first 43 minutes altogether, but then things really cooled off. Just four shots in the following 57 minutes. The second half largely controlled and dictated by Syracuse. They outshot Virginia in that first overtime period. Pretty innocuous from both sides. Here's Leo Alfonso for Virginia against Christian Curdy, who wins that duel. Excellent defending from Curdy. Doesn't bite. Alfonso wanting to get on his left foot, maybe have a crack towards goal once he shifts it to his left foot. Deft touch to find Leibold. He gets it to Kachevsky. Now Levante Johnson in the box. The shot and another terrific stop by Holden Brown. Best of the overtime period. Syracuse comes out swinging. Levante Johnson, we didn't say his name much in the first overtime period and throughout the second half. Quick release from Johnson forces the save from Holden. He has made some terrific saves here tonight. That's why he's the National Player of the Week. Season high nine saves in the quarterfinal win, and he's made some sensational stops here tonight in the semis as well. Kaczewski, clever footwork. A label on the cross, but nobody there in an orange and blue shirt. The only body in the box was Levante Johnson. You need more players willing to gamble if you're going to get an overload on the left-hand side, maybe an outside back, wing back on the other side. Get in. Levante Johnson again. It's time for Kachevsky at the top of the box. Sapoku on the turn. Defender swarming him. Syracuse starting the second overtime period very aggressively. Industrious effort in the final third. Here's Philip Horton. Has a pass intercepted by Label, who backtracks nicely. Using his pace now on the dribble. Running it, the back line. Finds a Poku. Back to Label in the box. And once again, Holden Brown is there. Holden Brown is standing on his head this game. I know he's given up a couple goals, but incredible goalkeeping from Brown. And Jonah Labold is still down after taking the shot. The sophomore still on the turf. Look at that determination. And Poku has been at the heart of so many good things from Syracuse. Good first touch from Labold gets it out from underneath his feet. And if he puts that anywhere than other, right at Brown, that's a goal. Well, Kappelsberger came in defensively for. Virginia, there may have been some contact there. A fifth-year player from Germany and a transfer from Wisconsin. And label hobbling off here. Well, he's been so dynamic here tonight. Great ability to pick up the ball, dribble with pace, challenge defenders 1v1 like he did right there. Winner. I like that mentality from label. That's the type of gambling that you need and want to see if you're coach McIntyre you want to see which players want to take responsibility in my experience at the collegiate level it's oftentimes your unsung heroes yes Levante Johnson and Nathan Apoku are going to command the attention of Virginia's entire back line that's going to create space for the likes of labeled for the likes of Kachevsky for the likes of other players around the field to step up and, and really make that winning play Looks like Labeled will be ready to come right back on. Well, strategically, Michael, is there ever a scenario where you're playing for penalty kicks where you think that might be your best option to win the game and do you see any of those scenarios developing here by any chance absolutely 
I think Virginia are clearly playing for penalty kicks because their lack of desire to commit numbers forward. Virginia have an amazing track record in the ACC tournament at this stage in the semifinals. I've seen it happen time and time again through George Gelnovac's tenure. If you don't give up anything, you frustrate your opponent, you put the game and nerves on them, it gives your team an out, and it sets up a whole different mind game going into penalty kicks. You do have the better of the two goalkeepers in Holden Brown. Label try to slip it through. And we've got half a dozen minutes remaining. Syracuse with the better chances in overtime, especially here in the second frame. Both teams in good form coming into this game. Virginia with just one loss over their last 10 games. Syracuse unbeaten in their previous seven. And looking to extend their postseason run in this ACC tournament to the title game on Sunday. Both teams will be in the NCAA tournament, but there's something special about winning your conference tournament as well, especially when it's arguably the top conference in all of college soccer. George Gelnovac issued a yellow card for arguing in that second half. Thought his team should have been awarded a penalty kick. Meanwhile, in the other semifinal matchup in that first half, Clemson striking first, leading over Wake Forest in Winston-Salem. Final five minutes of the second overtime here. Long ball lofted in. And the volley. Knocked down by Sheely. It's good technique by Gashi to just lob that towards goal. Sheely, a couple yards off his line, may have gotten caught. But I like the footwork to secure that ball, catch it, and then spring the counter. Transfer from Maryland, who came through the Atlanta United Academy. All ACC second team player this year. trying to find Koppelsberger and just too easy of a giveaway. As I was saying, those are the type of plays that coaches get so frustrated by at this point in the game. No pressure on you, no excuse to give that ball away. Oh, the long ball, Brown coming out. He's clipped by Johnson. He wanted a call. That's the way Syracuse got the goal against North Carolina. The long ball from Sheely to Levante Johnson. Trying to do it again here in overtime of the semifinals. We're already starting to see errant passes. It's down to tired minds and tired legs. Players starting to think about penalty kicks looming. That can affect the quality of play in the final three minutes. This is Nils Orwal, a sophomore from Frankfurt, Germany, who has come on as a sub at various points here tonight. He's back on now. Now since halftime of this game, Syracuse out shooting Virginia 12 to 5. Cavaliers had that early spurt at the start of the game in the final third, but nothing consistent since then. Closing in on two minutes left to go before penalty kicks. In this second half of overtime, a player who we haven't called his name much at all is Leo Alfonso. Curtis kept him very hey. quiet. Yeah, the throw's back here. Alfonso with the second goal of the game for Virginia. Gave them the lead here in this second half. Paul Visa on the throw. Trying to find Alfonso. An 
ACC tournament game went to penalty kicks. It was the quarterfinals last year. Fifth seeded Notre Dame beat four seeded Louisville. And this game here in the semifinals in 2022, just about a minute away from going to penalties as well. I think we're going to see a lot of that in this final minute. Both goalkeepers or defenders lumping balls forward, hoping for an errant touch. A ball to fall right into one of their attacker's feet. Brown will play it long. Half a minute now left to go. Virginia hasn't had many chances in the final third here in overtime, but maybe a chance for the final opportunity before penalty kicks. Mangarov is going to throw it in. He'll get it back. And one more throw with 15 seconds left to go. Paul Visa comes over. Going to make a long throw into the box, try to get a last second shot on goal. Good deep throw, back post, final seconds. And we will decide it in penalty kicks at Syracuse. 90 minutes of regulation, couldn't decide it. Another 20 minutes of overtime, and now it'll be penalty kicks from the SU Soccer Stadium. Now the goals tonight in regulation, Kachevsky scoring first from the spot for Syracuse. Andreas Eulen answered with a header. It was 1-1 at halftime. And then Afonso gave Virginia their first lead of the night in the second half before Lorenzo Baselli answered late in the first 90 for Syracuse to tie the game. And it will be Syracuse going first. Holden Brown in goal. He has been sensational tonight for the visitors. Virginia again undefeated on the road this season. Have not lost away from Charlottesville. And first up, it will be Baselli, who scored the tying goal in the final 10 minutes to send us to overtime. Now two goals on the season. The junior from Italy. The perfect start. And Baselli will be breathing a bit of a sigh of relief. Brown guesses the right way, but it's the height that Baselli gets. And I think Brown should have saved that one. Not enough power on it, but Baselli won't care. It's about getting that shot over the line that matters most. The fans bouncing the stands. That's why some of the camera angles are a little shaky here at the SU Soccer Stadium. Very much engaged in this one. And it's going to be Daniel Mangarov, the junior from Duluth, Georgia. First for Virginia against Russell Shealy. Convincing. And Mangarov for a lot of the misplaced passes tonight. He gets this spot on going across his body with his left foot. Low gets whipped and in that bottom corner. So difficult to save if you're a goalkeeper. You see shots like that and you think, why don't players do that all the time? Why do you see in the Euros or the World Cup players missing the way they do? It's really the mental pressure. It's the stress. It's not the execution. Now Kuchevsky trying to go two for two on penalties tonight. Went the same direction each time. Scored in the first half and now here at the end. And I like this from Kuchevsky. Brown knows Kachevsky wants to go to that left-hand side. He went lower left first and lifts it up, gets height on that, gets the same amount of whip. But if he doesn't get height on that, then Brown will save that. Well taken penalty kick. Now Andreas Eulett, who scored the first goal on a header tonight for Virginia. The senior from Norway and ACC Defensive Player of the Year. To tie it at two. And he went with the stutter step, and it cost him. 
from the moment Eulin stepped up, I didn't think he looked the most confident customer. And this is the part of penalty kicks. I don't understand why players go for the stutter step because it kills your momentum. If Eulin continues running towards that ball, he's got a powerful shot. And you see what it means to Sheely. Great read on it. And does well to parry that out and give Syracuse the advantage. Pressure dialed up a little more on keeper Holden Brown for Virginia. As Nathan Apoku, the sophomore from Ghana, leading this team in goals this season. Keep Syracuse perfect. Apoku with a bit of a drop to the ball, but he picks up momentum. Not the cleanest of strike. Ball flops into the ground a bit. But credit to him, it's that lower bottom corner. I take it back, it's actually a very good strike. And that second angle, that hit the ground, but it's finding that bottom corner, keeping it away from the goalkeeper. It provides success. Not a must make yet, but pretty close. Philip Horton, the junior from Ohio for Virginia. Five goals on the season. He got away with the stutter step there. And you see Philip Horton rallying up the crowd. A casual approach to step up. Yet again, another penalty kick taken low. So difficult to try if you're a goalkeeper. If Sheely's a couple inches taller, then maybe he gets down low enough. He reads it right, but can't execute. Kurt Kaloff. Syracuse inching closer. Kaloff can feel it. Syracuse can feel it. That's a good penalty kick. Brown so aggressive to go to his left. And that goes down to reading and doing your homework if you're Syracuse. Brown has gone left more times he's gone right. And Syracuse, they're capitalizing on it. A miss here, and it's over. Syracuse will advance. Axel Allender, the junior from Norway, needs to make it to prolong this penalty kick shootout. Oh, cheeky. You have to applaud, Allender. This took a lot of guts. Cool as you like. But it's because he has momentum going towards that ball that he can take that center step, sending Sheely the wrong way. And when you send the goalkeeper the wrong way, you still have to execute. He's watching Sheely the whole way, and then coolly slots it into the right side. Now Colin Byros. The grad student from Jackson, Ohio. If he makes it, Syracuse advances to the title game. You have to applaud Syracuse for their commitment to playing. You see what it means to the fans, and you see what it means to these players. There's no better feeling than advancing to play in an ACC championship game. And I think the best team won tonight. They went five for five in penalties. And now in the title game for the first time in seven years. Number two, Syracuse. Trailing in the second half, scored late to tie it. And then they were superb when it got to penalties, made all five of their shots in convincing fashion. And the number two seed will play in the conference title game on Sunday in Cary, North Carolina.